Oh, the laborer and the snake. A snake having made his hole close to the porch of a cottage inflict a mortal bite, inflicted a mortal bite on the cottager's infant son. Grieving over his loss, the father resolved to kill the snake. The next day, when it came out of its hole for food, he took up his axe, but by swinging too hastily, missed its head and cut off only the end of its tail. After some time, the cottager, afraid that the snake would bite him also, endeavored to make peace and placed some bread and salt in the hole. The snake, slightly hissing, said, There can be henceforth no peace between us, for whenever I see you, I shall remember the loss of my tail, and remember, and whenever you see me, you will be thinking of the death of your son. No one truly forgets injuries in the presence of him who caused the injury. Okay. So, essentially, this snake bit this cottager's baby, a little baby infant son, and killed him. And so, the cottager came out and with an axe and cut off the end of its tail. Tried to cut his head off, but he swung too hard because he, he was really mad. I mean, he was pretty upset, obviously, about his infant son being, being killed by the snake. So he cut off the end of his tail. And then, the cottager said, you know what? I'm kind of afraid of the snake because the snake might kill me too. Tries to make peace. Place some bread and some salt in the hole. But the snake, slightly hissing, right? Snake, slightly hissing, said. It's a lot of sounds like a hissing phrase here. It's uh, alliteration. It's it's kind of onomatopoeia -ish as well. Um. So. There can be henceforth no peace between us, for whenever I see you, I shall remember the loss of my tail, and whenever you see me, you'll be thinking of the death of your son. So, no one truly forgets injuries in the presence of him who caused the injury, and that's, you know, that's definitely, uh, you know, worthy of, of study, you know, um, even though forgiveness is crucial. Um, you also, you know, you, you can't forget so much that you just, you let, you know, you let someone run roughshod over you. So, and here the snake actually said, nah, I'm staying away. You know, because the snake knows that, you know, he he's done really wrong and, and that, uh, you know, he's pretty, oh, pretty wise. At least in that moment. I don't know if it was wise to bite this, you know. I don't know if there's a judgment by, by Aesop you know, with regards to the snake killing this, this kid, you know, um, but regardless, he was, he, I think he was relatively wise in that moment because he's, he's saying, look, you know, this person's, you know, has already harmed me a lot and, um, no one truly, that's, that's, the, that's the, well, this, this is a probably part of the, the person that translated this, this is probably his phrase. This probably isn't Aesop's phrase. Um, I think Aesop just wrote the stories, but uh, regardless, it's that word truly. No one truly forgets injuries in the presence of him who caused the injury. So it's like no one, like for sure, no one, like one hundred percent. You know, that's why they always say you don't forgive and don't forget. You know, because you still want to protect yourself and you still want to be vigilant about um, not being too, you know, going too overboard. Um, to forgive or to to let bygones be bygones or sweep things under the rug. You gotta, you know. So Aesop's really a little bit more nuanced here, and he's saying, look, it's not as simple as just, you know, the world is just, um, you know, sugary sweetness with no cavities, <laughs> and 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 gumdrops with no cavities. Um. So the laborer and the snake, very textured, sort of analysis here. Even though these are very simple stories, extremely simple stories, um, and obviously very short, but still pretty nuanced and just let, reminding us, you know, that uh, you got to be, be careful and that no one truly forgets injuries in the presence of him who caused the injury, the laborer on the snake. Thank you very much.